as 305 and we're here to cover innovation by Chukwe Buka Polika, a 300 level student of electrical engineering. My name is Sodono Adoko. I am Sonia Pankali. And it's time for us to hear from the innovator. What you're seeing here right now is an inverter. An inverter is kind of, let me, let me define an inverter. It's a device that inverts power. When I say inverts power, it converts DC, which is direct current, to AC, which is alternative current. Now, DC is what you get from your battery, direct current, while AC, alternative current, is what you use in the house. So, when it converts DC for you to AC, then you can now use it for your appliances at home. So, that's why it's called an inverter. It inverts power. <laughs> Okay, we're talking about an inverter and what it actually is and what it can do. So, for me to invert now from DC to DC, that's what I actually want to do. Then I need to put some series of circuits together and manipulate some things. After I know my equations, after some calculations, do some things and and invert the DC to AC now. Um, this this um, an inverter is actually made up of stages so the first stage is the oscillatory stage where you produce the signal I'll, I'll explain for that so this is the oscillatory stage this board this is a variable board and this side components electronic components transistors this is the IC there are so many things on the big one that looks like a long mini people those the IC then this is the transformer stage this is the transformer stage and this is power stage that consists of the power transistors it's actually now I inverter can be a center tap inverter which is center tap um, topology it's, um, it's push sorry it's push put topology for the center tap but this is not a push put this is a H push topology that means it gives you a pure sine wave than that of a push wave inverter so the same oscillatory stage is the same one we use for our center tap but yeah what happens here now in the first stage which i call the oscillatory stage signal is produced when i mean signal i mean frequency of up to 50 hertz or according to whatever i want so now this signal i send this signal what the signal actually does is it switches my power transistor so in, in this my power transistor i offer one effect of like 50 times in one second um, why an inverter should be fed over a normal generator we use at home is because they actually do the same thing but everything that has advantages has disadvantages the inverter can produce pure sine wave at a stable voltage rate and you can use it for as long as you want now this inverter is made up of 2 12 volt batteries or 200 amp each connected in series so when i say connected in series i mean that i step up the, the voltage and the current is constant that means each of them is 200 amp but what i'm going to be having at the end of this two black and this two black and red wire is um, about 24 volt at still 200 amp but the batteries are good that's why i guess you can offer one the system and why will I take an inverter over a generator? It's like a lame question because you won't have you won't have sound coming from your inverter. You don't need to buy fuel for your inverter. You don't need to be checking your inverter every two, two weeks or one week. To, you cannot just wake up one morning and put it on and it's just packed up and it's a visit to start for you. As far as your charging is there for you. There are extra stops you can add to your inverter and make it more efficient for you. If I had a panel, I will not complain of low battery. With solar panel, I could charge my inverter. With solar panel, my inverter can be on 24 hours because once there is sun, you can charge. Two process. How I convert this from this battery 
to it, which you can use in your room. The charging part can actually or can also be a different setting for this room that I will build to charge the inverter. 